three senior daycare centers are set up for the elderly to live a meaningful golden life. A paralyzed volunteer found his value in life through helping other injured patients. Suzu Foundation and the new Taipei city government are working together to set up three long-term daycare centers for the elderly at the Zhonghe, Luzhou and Sanchong Jinsu Hall. They do not only provide daycare services for the seniors, but also recycling and gardening lessons, enabling the seniors to lead a fruitful golden life. <laughs> Dancing along to the music, the elderly are performing a song about recycling and more elderly are practicing beneath the stage. I've learned so much by coming here. I've learned how to be a person. I've learned some knowledge and also learned about happiness. On the other end, there are also elderly doing exercises working on their muscles and volunteers on the side teaching. My shoulders are a bit tight, so when I sweat a little, it feels better. Are the treadmills are not suited for the elderly. By standing on it for five minutes, they might not be able to stand that long, and it doesn't reach an exercising impact. Our machines are seated, and they can exercise longer. New Taipei City and City Foundation set up three adult daycare centers in Luzhou, Shanchong, and Shanghe districts, where they not only provide daycare services, but also other long-term care services, classes, as well as meals. For example, as a kitchen volunteer, or if they join us in other charity work, even in our sutra study groups, through different activities, these elderly can obtain spiritual fulfillment, and this place will then become a warm place for them to visit. In the past two years, our goal has been to establish 60 long-term care centers, and currently we're at 52, and there are eight more in the works, so we can definitely meet this goal next year. With these new adult daycare centers along with medical support, the elderly in these regions can live comfortably and with meaning. In Kaohsiung, the Ai Kindergarten has recently incorporated a baobab tree into its campus. This tree was once broken during a typhoon. The kindergarten workers specially paved a wooden walkway while the teachers and volunteers planted turf to protect the tree. Rolling up their sleeves and wearing bamboo hats, these kindergartners are planting turf around a baobab tree. Rolling it out, I think it is very fun. The adults work with the children to plant turf. They're incorporating this 14-year-old tree into their campus. Our two aunties and uncles have planted to host tea ceremony in this area. The kindergartners have thought about how they can accompany the tree. In fact, this baobab tree was once broken during a typhoon. Its tree trunk is very special. It is also known as a life-saving tree, so the children cherish it. We first move away the messy trees and weeds, then we'll all use wooden walkway to maintain it. The architect has designed the space to be safe and able to protect the original trees. Originally, water easily accumulates here. It was dangerous for the children to hold activities here. This is a platform everyone can plant turf while playing, improving its safety. In the future, the kindergarteners can enjoy the companionship of the Baobab tree and learn to appreciate Mother Nature while playing. In Taoyuan Bader Jinsu Hall, a parent child growth class was held to invite new immigrant mothers to share their hometown children's games. A series of class was also organized for new immigrants and indigenous families to find happiness in life. The child is transferring a marble with great cautious. While this child is burying a marble with great effort. This is a game played by Indonesian children and it's also a health check. This game is to check if the children have a good sense of the balance and whether their treasure is good enough. And there is Malaysian kidding for the children to do. 
In Malaysia, knitting is incorporated into the art lesson in elementary school. For example, knitting will appear in rattan products, which are more stereoscopic, like utensils and other household goods. Children in the parent-child class experience children's games in Southeast Asian countries. There is also a group of people sharing their happiness in life. When I see my son after I wake up in the morning, I feel very blessed. I came here today, I feel very happy and blessed. In fact, happiness is very simple. As long as you are content, everything will be fine. This is actually a series of classes in happiness. In the first lesson, students have already come across the true meaning of happiness and moved by the story of Chen Tianlong, who had a car accident before. Although I had a car accident, I didn't get disabled. I'm still able to walk. This is also my happiness. It's been a year and it's very different now. He will share a lot of things with us and bears a happy heart. He always teaches us to be grateful. In the Bada Jin Si Hall, this lively class can allow community residents to gather happiness. In Xinju, CZ Second Hand Assessive Device Team consists mainly of three male volunteers. They deliver the devices to those in need and also provide their own warehouse for storage. In fact, we treat every user as our family. When the users have needs, we'll make sure that the devices can function normally before delivering them, creating a cycle of love. Volunteers unload the wheelchair, commode chair, and electrical bed from the truck. Zhang Guiying's father-in-law recently fell in the vegetable garden and broke his femur. Therefore, he desperately needs the assistive devices. To provide my father-in-law with an electrical bed, so many people have come to help us. I really appreciate them. City offers such good service, helping people who need assistive devices for short terms. They even help us save the transportation fees. For us, this is great help. The second-hand assistive device team from Xinzhu carries out their mission. Volunteer Xie Taifu provides his own warehouse to store the assistive devices. In addition, he washes and disinfects the devices, as he understands the needs of the assistive devices users. They might not have access to these assistive devices. For people who face difficulties in life, they might not be able to afford these devices. Since we have the opportunities to deliver these devices to them, they are very joyful. The team members deliver the assistive devices and also help with the changes of device parts so the users can be worry-free. The device recipients must have needs, so they ask for us to help them. I can feel how they are grateful to us. The service will change their perception of Ziji. As people who help other people, we are truly blessed. As the volunteers provide second-hand assistive devices to those in need, they have created a cycle of love and compassion. Yanbing, the director of Taoyuan Spinal Cord Support and Development Center, became paralyzed in a workplace accident when he was 27. Since then, he gave up on himself for nine years. Yet, his mother didn't leave him and finally opened up his heart. His life was ignited again. Now, besides helping other injured patients like himself to live on their own, he is also a dedicated volunteer, living the rest of his life to its fullest. those who can walk, we refer to as straight walking people, and also good guys. For those like me who use the wheelchair, we call bad guys because our bodies are bad, so we are bad guys. Before becoming a bad guy, I work at a factory associated with Formosa Plastics. My annual income was more than 30 million New Taiwan dollars, that's right. It could be estimated I had enough money to take my wife to travel the world at the age of 45. 
Who knew I'd suffer a workplace accident at the age of 27? I fell from an eight-story height to the basement and broke the first section of my thoracic spine. It's not curable. I spent all my hard earned money on medical fees, looking for miracle doctors. Towards the end, I was on the verge of selling my house to pay for medical fees, and I just stopped. I didn't want to do that anymore, as currently there is no medical science that can repair spinal injuries completely. He had a bad temper. It was like that for nine years. It got so bad, his father beat him. His grandpa and uncle did too. For every 10 spinal cord injury patients, there are 11 people who have suicidal tendencies. The 11th is a family member because taking care of the patient is tough work. They have to tolerate their temperaments. What can I do? He's still my son. I can't give up on him. I need to take care of his kid, my mother-in-law, my husband, my grandchildren, and him. A month passed and I bought a second-handed car to drive around. This car is not a remodel, but it had parts added to support one-handed driving. Pushing it forward is the brake, while the acceleration is twisting it just like a scooter. I've been trapped inside my house for nine years and was ignited by a car. On average, those who suffer from spinal cord injuries is 27.3 years old. There is still plenty of life to live after death. And how best to live a life with dignity and meaning is what we're here to share and support with. Our courses are affordable, with participants paying only meal fees and token amount. Dormitory fees, training fees and such are free. My social circle has gotten bigger since coming here. They teach us to live with confidence and not be affected by the opinions of others. We are still humans. We just use the wheelchair as a tool to get around, and they use their feet to get around. That's all that's different. We wanted to give back to the center because it's thanks to the center that we can live independently after suffering from an injury like ours. I also met my husband here, and we formed a family. We are pretty grateful for this place. I am on a media volunteer assignment today for the 2020 Year and Blessing Ceremony. They are photographers and I'm the writers. This is how we paired up. One uses their hands, one uses their feet. These two make the perfect team. They complement each other. For the later part of my life, I want to live it to my highest potential and repair all the bad that I did in the past. In Dongguan, China, there is an 83-year-old grandma who suffers from multiple chronic diseases and mobility issues. She can only rely on her son who comes to care for her every day. Upon learning of her plight, the Zivarantis went there to provide love and care to her. 83-year-old Grandma Zhang has Parkinson's disease, diabetes and other chronic diseases. After she underwent a heart surgery, volunteers have come to care for her. My mother has multiple chronic diseases. She thinks that people will harm her and people talk to her. Sometimes she does not sleep at night, talking to herself. She can only rely on medications. Grandma Zhang relies on her son who comes to care for her before going to work every day. Volunteers visit means that her son can finally take a break. Volunteers work together to clean the kitchen and bathroom, paying attention to all the corners. They also bathe Grandma Zhang, who has not taken a shower for a long time. Every step is challenging. Go! 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 Go!
Counting the steps and taking the steps of love, volunteers have provided love and care to Grandma Zhang. Volunteers' companionship has brought a smile to Grandma Zhang's face, and it is the best reward for the volunteers. Also in China, with a view to improve the bonding between the working parents and their children, Shanghai and Kwansan Suzu volunteers launched a book bag exchange program to encourage families to read together. To promote reading for children of all ages, city volunteers from Kwansan began a book bag exchange program, and this is the first exchange after the Lunar New Year. The amount of books you have read can be reflected in your actions and words. The more you read, the wiser you are, as a part of the book stays with you, and I believe everyone feels this way. The modern family often needs two sets of income to sustain their living. However, it also takes away much of the family time children may need. But with this family reading program, parental bonds can be strengthened. After implementing family reading time in our home, now whenever my kids hear it's bedtime, they think of reading. It's the first thing that comes to mind for them. They will ask for their books to read and will settle down to read it. It's a great improvement, and I feel like they are not as rowdy as before. In the past, my children like to watch TV or play on the phone, but through family reading time, they have said goodbye to watching TV, and we have begun to improve our family connection. I think this is a good habit to keep up, which I hope to maintain. Meanwhile, in Shanghai, there was a book bag exchange program as well, where parents share the improvements they have seen in their children. She is older now, so she will look at the words itself, and will ask me about the words. But it's still mainly picture-based storyline. I try to maintain the same core storyline and don't try to put other lessons into the stories. No matter if reading time is done by the father or mother, family reading time is always a good time for everyone involved. In Indonesia, Suzu volunteers invited entrepreneurs and Chinese organizations to collect rice and masks, which were then distributed to the residents affected by the pandemic in different communities. How's the economy? The grocery store owner can feel it. Our market business has not been good, so we can only lead a frugal life. Suji distributes 10 kilograms of rice to keep hunger at bay. Suji has invited Chinese and enterprises to collect rice and mass to be delivered to one million impoverished families. A while ago, the place was flooded and the flood area was very large. The flood water was up to adults' chest. 12, 13, 14, Most residents are workers. The factory has stopped working because of the pandemic, so they are staying at home. At the Army Command Headquarters in East Jakarta, there was a simple but meaningful handover ceremony. This is great help for us. As rice is Indonesian staple food, the supplies are very helpful. With the help of police and army, Suji volunteers can go into the communities to deliver Chinese people's love and care. I hope the affected residents can get the help. Although the care packages are small, at least the recipients can feel the care and best wishes. Taiwan is entering fog season with many places prone to second onset of heavy fog, leading to more accidents than other months. A car crash has recently occurred with more than 20 vehicles colliding with each other, causing deaths and injuries. Follow our reports as we learn more about the dangers of fog in Taiwan. Following a taxi on Yangjing Road, one unknowingly is driving through the clouds and fog. Even an experienced driver with more than 30 years of driving has to become cautious in these types of conditions.
I really can see the road here. This road is like this in February, March and April. It's very foggy and one time a customer called a taxi from Taipei City and he told me to go to Jingshan. I asked him how to go and he told me to take the Yangjing Road. But because the fog was coming, I couldn't see clearly, so we drove very slowly. Not only are the mountains prone to fog, there's also a place famous for fog. In Linko, New Taipei, you can't see anything unless you turn on the car lights. It is only half an hour after they break, and it is when the fog is thickest. You can see that the whole line of sight is quite unclear, as the Central Weather Bureau also issued a special report on dense fog earlier today. Fog is most likely to occur from January to May. Usually, there are two types of fog in Taiwan. One is called advection fog, when warmer air comes in and it starts to condense at a place near the surface of seawater, which may be 1 or 200 meters. The fog becomes severe and moves slowly to the land. Coastal cities will see fog and the effect will last for a long time. It may last for one or two days. As for the other type, radiative cooling effect and radiation fog are more obvious in open areas. There are time limits as it generally occurs from late at night to early morning. As far as Taiwan's terrain is concerned, most of it occurs in the western half of the island, but in some scenic areas it can be a nightmare for drivers. 21 cars crashed into each other at around 7 o'clock on the morning of February 21st during peak traffic hours on Provincial Highway 61, which was covered with thick fog and had poor visibility. May continued to drive fast without slowing down. The result was two deaths and eight injuries. According to statistics from the Transportation Ministry, the probability of accidents increases with the prevalence of fog. Looking back at last year, when the weather is foggy or smoke-filled, the number of accidents that occurred was 132. Among them, the number of accidents occurred during the foggy season from January to May was some 96 cases, accounting for more than 70 percent of the accidents. During the same period of time, some 130 people were injured. According to statistics in the United Kingdom, they calculated that air pollution and fog leading to poor visibility is directly related to accidents. For every one microgram increase, for example, if PM2.5 increases from 15 to 16 by one microgram, its traffic accident rate will increase by 0.2 to 0.6 percent. Elevated or relatively hilly roads or platform areas are more prone to fogging. Before the beginning of the fog season, some equipment maintenance will be done in advance, and we will do some publicity and warnings to remind drivers of this danger. The Transportation Ministry also identifies roads that are prone to fog, including National Highway 1 from Taishan to Linko, National Highway 5 from Xideng to Pingming, Provincial Road 61, Holong to Tongxiao. Several major tourist hotspots, a total of 50 roads are identified, reminding drivers to be alert and pay attention to dense fog at all times to find the safest way home. In China, finances with volunteers cooperated with community committee to promote equal friendliness and encourage residents to practice recycling for the betterment of the community. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you and see you next time.